Hi, welcome to Mars Moon Space TV. I am Thomas Mikey and I have two special guests with me today. You already met Brad Conan Shepard before in, in some of the other interviews we have done, but I have a, what I call a VIP guest today. Many of you probably recognize that nice man sitting next to Brad here. This is civilian astronaut, consultant, pilot, Kent Johnston. Kent, welcome to Mars Moon Space TV. Thank you, Thomas. I'm glad to be here. And welcome to Brad also as well. Thank you, Thomas. I saw a link that Brad posted on Mars Moon Space for Zoom Club on Facebook, where you have been donating your archive to the Roswell uh, Museum, your uh, private collection of Apollo images. And I saw some of the images uh, that Brad also showed me. And I would like to talk about some of the images today. And, and the first images that I want to bring up is uh, the image of those dots or lights that it looks like and based on the, the moon. Okay. What's your take on that, Ken? Okay. Um, I was very fortunate that I was at the uh, Lunar Receiving Laboratory after we had tested the lunar module and, and got the first flights to the moon done. And uh, so I was able to get, uh, you know, first generation prints off the original negatives. Now, some of these prints, uh, people with the expertise in, in photo analysis and stuff such as uh, Brad is, have taken a look at some of them, particularly those that have anomalies in them. Uh, that don't look like it be they could not be a natural uh, geological formation that it would have to be uh, something that was uh, made by sentient beings or intelligent beings <laughs> and so um, some of the pictures that you've looked at I would presume there's no question in my mind that they are made by uh, either us at a past time where we were advanced or alien uh, bases other life forms in our universe, uh, so to speak. Right. When I read your biography, Ken, uh, one of the things I, I noticed was that you refused to follow those orders that you got. Why did you refuse to, to follow those orders? Well, because one, the, um, the the whole Apollo program was paid for by American tax dollars. And so I, I considered the, the material and equipment as belonging to the people of the United States. So whenever... Um, what I would do while I was the director of the data and photo control lab, I would keep five copies of every one of the prints, pictures, and slides in filing cabinets. So when scientists came in and wanted to have a, a photograph from orbit where their, where their particular rock was from, and then on the lunar surface looking at the, the particular rock before they picked it up. Um, so I, I needed to have a, an extra supply, so I made it where I kept five of each. And when uh, we finished Apollo 15, uh, my uh, contractor supervisor, Bud Laskawa, came in and said, Ken, um, it got orders, I want you to get rid of all but one set. We don't need to keep all of these uh, on the other. And I, I argued with him. I said, well, we should give them to one of our universities. After all, we paid for them, put them in the science department of the university. And he says, no, no, I want you to just dump them, get rid of them, keep one set. And I argued, and he finally, he said, no, I don't care what you do, just get rid of them. And it, it said the orders came from on high. Uh, above above us, way above. So, so, so what, what did you do then? Uh, you, you took some of them with you. How, how did you get them with you out of there? What, 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 how Was there a high security level where you were working? Or, or, or how did you do that? Okay, I, you have to have a secret clearance to be uh, in, inside the, the lab or be escorted. Okay, um, I had a top secret clearance at the time. So these weren't classified as top secret, although we, we treated them as, as uh, confidential or, or, you know, so we kept good track of them. So when I was told to get rid of them, um, I argued, he says, I don't care what you do, just get rid of them. And I took that statement, he said, I don't care what you do, as tacit approval for me to do as I did. So I kept a set for myself <coughs> for future. I dumped three sets into the dumpster or the trash. And I kept one set, just like I was told. So that's how I wound up with my archive, or, or my set. 
with your private eye cap. Yes. How, how many picture? How many of these pictures are, are you working on now, Brad? Oh my gosh. Um, I've 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 gone through all of them, but I didn't want to hog all the anomalies and everything that are that's in them. I just wanted to know, you know, because it, there there are so many great anomalies, and I want them to get a chance to go through those, you know. So I I I, I picked out some ones that I thought were really decent and clear to show as an example, you know. So I I think the the one from the command um, taking a picture from the lunar module of the command module and the array of dishes or whatever that is on the surface I, I I thought that was a very striking example of the anomalies that are in Ken's archive um, and another one that I consider very important and just about everybody that looks at it says it's just a rock or something but I know better it looks like lunar ruins and there are very um, geocentric lines that are on the surface and there, there are very um, squared off blocks mm. on the on, on the lunar horizon. And Ken, Ken and I, um, I, I can't take credit for discovering that because I know Ken knew about it. He said, "Look on the horizon," yeah. and they, you know, where they had painted painted out the the, the background black or tried to or yeah, whatever. Removing all the stars or whatever excuse they yeah. were used stars or this or that. Most of Kent's images you can see the background in them. and You can see things flying around in the background and everything. Um, uh, there, There's a great Apollo 12 image of the Earth rise where there's something shooting across the surface and there, there's one in Apollo 11 in the background where there is um, some kind of craft that almost looks um, like the command service module but it's not. The, I have. I think I have yeah. that picture here. Uh, appendix yeah. of anomalous UFOs in the lunar sky. I was just about to ask to to, to, yeah, to, that, to that picture. Uh, b oh, back yeah. back to you, Ken. Uh, yeah. uh, looking at that picture, uh, UFOs in, in the lunar sky, uh, as uh, Brett just mentioned. W what's your thoughts on on a picture like that? Okay, it's it, it's fascinating to me that all of this, all of these anomalies and things were able to sneak by and and I, I to real quickly kind of give you an example of what I ran into because at the main photo laboratory at the Johnson Space Center you go up the front there's a counter you can order a picture there and they'll they'll get it for you or they'll order it for you if you go behind that and go into the next room you have to have a secret clearance to be in there but that's where you can sit down and you can go through and do your research while you're there the third place it requires a top secret, and that's where we keep everything filed and all that stuff. So uh, I had access to all of those. I, and when I was going back into the lab one, one particular time, I go in there's three people sitting around a big light table, uh, which is about uh, two foot by three foot, and lights illuminating from the inside, opaque on the top, mm -hmm. and they had big eight by ten negatives, and they were painting out. This was before Photoshop; it didn't exist. It was in 19, uh, 1969, 1970, 71 in that period. And I asked them what they were doing, and they said, oh, well, one, one of the guys says, oh, we're professional strippers. And I don't know if you think about strippers. But anyway, <laughs> the, the young lady the young lady that was there, who we now know who is, um, she said, no, actually what we're doing is we are painting out things on the horizon or in the sky that it would confuse people, and we don't want to confuse people. So, one of the ladies that were there was Donna Hare. Right. Okay. So, so, you, so th that's one name she, that we know of now. And we're talking 45 years ago. Folks. Yeah, that was a long time ago. We, we kept these secrets for a long time, and now, now with with what I put out an archive like that, and people that were present, they're able to come forward now too without fear of retribution. Because that was one of my next question. Uh, have you knowledge of uh, other ex NASA employees uh, who who have who? could do the same as you do to, to take pictures with them and uh, make private collections or uh, smuggle out uh, uh, pictures uh, right. in any way. Right. Do you have any knowledge of other people uh, that could have it, done it, that? Interesting enough is that when we completed the, um, um, down at the very near end of the Apollo program, um, we had people from the government come to our homes and ask if we had any material, books and materials that and they were they confiscated and took 
uh, took those all back. As a matter of fact, when uh, President George Bush Sr. said we were going to go back to the moon, NASA sent their new young engineers to people's to museums and places and to where they'd take their instruments and they'd measure all the different equipment because they didn't have any blueprints or records or designs or drawings to be able to go from. So yes, a lot of people kept things and of course whenever I was asked, I didn't have anything at all to, to give away and I kept I kept mine hidden all these years. Mm -hmm. And the biggest concern though is if and some people that had come forward and talked that they run into accidents and they wind up not around him I'm not saying not saying anybody got killed or anything but it's kind of some of this strange is anyway I was warned about talking too much and then it wasn't until um, I think a uh, man but Richard Hoagland was uh, doing a, a lecture in mm -hmm. Seattle and I um, um, <laughs> I wanted to get his book autographed by him so I went to the deal and gave him a little letter saying you know I have all these pictures and stuff like that and he, he just went crazy over because he brought a, a team of four people to my house the next day and started looking at it. And they're looking at pictures kind of like what Brett did and, and they're saying, oh my God, look, you can actually see that there because the pictures they had looked at had been doctored and they couldn't find them. And that's kind of what they used my archive for as a, a control when people would call in and say, you know, look at this NASA photograph such as uh, AS15-88-11970 <laughs> which shows a whole lunar base. That, the that, yeah, that's what's important is that anomalists actually have a control now. Yep. That's through, the, through that, his archive. That's right. that's the great thing about that we now have, as you said, a, a control to to look back at and uh, and compare with. Uh, Ken, I was watching one of your videos and where you talked about the uh, Tchaikovsky crater uh, and uh, 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 a gun sequence camera. Dr. Thornton Page was in charge of the astronomical uh, branch of NASA, and they had their offices at the Jim West Mansion, which was just outside of uh, uh, the Johnson Space Center's main main confines. And uh, he, he had been to my office many times and looked at pictures and things, and he, he uh, knew I had experience in the Marine Corps as a pilot, and, and I knew how to operate um, 16 millimeter gun sequence camera projectors, etc. And he asked me to go to the photo lab and check out an Apollo uh, 14 reel of 16 millimeter film, and then to set up a showing for him and several of the other scientists um, the next day. So I, I did. I pulled it out. I made arrangements next door to the mission control building, and um, we all sat down and we're looking at at the the, the film as it's running through and. Um, running around and finally we're coming up, uh, on the back side of the moon up on uh, crater Tsiolkovsky and uh, the sun angle is such that half of the bottom of the crater is in, in shadow and uh, uh, as we're approaching in the middle of the shadow area there's this this cluster a lump of domes if you take your hand and you turn your hand palm up bring your fingers together mm -hmm. and you look at the top of your fingers they look like little bubbles well that's what it looked like and but it was illuminated they were illuminated from the inside and one of them had a column of of steam or something being projected off the top of it. And Dr. Page had me freeze the camera and with a gun sequence camera I went backwards. I could go frame by frame by frame or I could go multiple frames or I could go regular speed or what have you. And he had me do that several times and, and he had me stop. He turned to the other six scientists and he says, well boys, what do you think of that? And they all laughed. It was an inside joke. Years later, and thanks to like uh, Brett here, I, I got to thinking about the fact, you know, Dr. Page had to know exactly what was on that film, what we were going to look at, because he gave me the specific reel, which was only about 15 minutes long, so that I could pull it out and show it to everyone. The next day I was supposed to show that to the regular rank and file employees at NASA and show them what we had discovered on the moon. Well, the next day I set it up in the main auditorium. I'm showing that. We're coming up on Tsiolkovsky and, and the shadow and the crater, and there's nothing there. It had been 24 hours they had painted it out and recopied because I told the audience I said I'm having uh, technical difficulties just a moment I took it out and I went through each one all of the holes lined it up for, for the mechanical part of the projector and there was it was gone and um, when I checked back in that same day I ran into Dr. Uh, Dr. Page and I asked him what happened to those domes on the backside of the moon his comment was there was never anything there <laughs> He, he's way of making you say. Uh, yeah, just to you, tell you, you uh, Thomas, Yeah, go ahead. Just to tell you how how specific that reel was. It 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 was capturing Tchaikovsky Crater 
on the Terminator while they were doing a TEI, a trans-Earth insertion. So they were leaving the moon. It was like, leaving like this. Yeah, and and um, there there were um, scientists or speculators that said that that's impossible. Tchaikovsky Crater wasn't filmed in Apollo 14. Oh yes, it was. But I filmed. I I found that. I found those images sequences. So. And it's exactly what Ken describes: the same shadow angles and everything. I didn't even know if I was going to find it, but I did. So we we now know that's that's the truth. It's Apollo fourteen, Tchaikovsky crater. You know? <laughs> Great, Ken. What will be the next thing we will hear from you in in public? Uh, I know you have made a new book uh, that you also will be able to find a link on on marsmoonspace dot com. We're gonna link it up there also, so you can check it out there. But have you any other plans in in future for for disclosure uh, lectures uh, kind? As a matter of fact, oh. next next week, this is being hectic. If you can see behind me, I have been autographing CDs that we put together of all three books. Uh, I was asked to be the guest at the International UFO uh, Museum and Conference. Yep, here we go. Boy, they're going to get it. There you go. Ken Smoot, uh, yes. Yep, and uh, that'll be at Roswell. And they every 4th of July, they have a huge, big event. I mean, thousands and th- hundreds of thousands of people show up because it's an anniversary of the uh, UFO crashing at uh, Roswell back in 1949, 47, excuse me, yeah. And so I'm, I'm going to be speaking three days in a row on a Thursday, Friday, and a Saturday at the museum. And I'll be uh, uh, giving a special out to the people that, that are there. They're going to be able to get this, um, uh, um, all, all of the books condensed down to one for only $20 instead of like 45 if they bought them individually yeah. on... Um, uh, Gumroad, yeah, yeah, Gumroad.com. Uh, so it's, it's, it's I'm busy. Gonna, check, I'm awesome. gonna buy. A, uh, I'm gonna buy one of the, those DVDs. So uh, just sign okay. one to me and put it in the mailbox, and I'll send you a, a check. <laughs> it would be my okay. pleasure. You bet. Yes, Ken Johnston, Brad Collins, Shepard. Thank you for participating in 15 minutes with Marsmo Space TV. Thank you both for participating and contributing. You're very welcome. Thank you. Yeah, and, and tr- Truth is out there. All we have to do is just go find it. That's the truth. And for all of you out there, you can uh, see the pictures that we are talking about on marsmoonspace.com, where you also can find the link to uh, where you can buy Ken's new book or books, if I may say so. They will also be linked up to uh, kenjohnstonmedia.com from there also, so you can go check out what Ken is doing. Until we see you again, take care. Thank you. Thank you, Thomas. Take Bye. Care. Bye. Bye. <laughs>